the postscript uh, the preface is in super tiny print, so this may be one entire program by itself. Um, since this preface was written, and almost printed, I was shoot a book entitled Theatrum Chemicum Britannicum and so on by Elias Ashmole Esquire and in some annotations there at the end of an account concerning Dr. Dean Edward Kelly, there stilled Sir Edward Kelly out of a diary of Dr. D's, all written in with his own hand, as I do not question the gentleman's fidelity in his business, so I make as little question but Dr. D's own hand will be found to agree in all matters of fact both here and there if any shall take the pains to compare, and it may be the reader will receive some further satisfaction in some particulars by his labor, which is the reason that I mention the book here being but lately come to my knowledge. His judgment either concerning Dr. D. or Kelly I meddled not with, and it may be to be seen what is here to be seen. He would have been of another opinion in some things. Here is enough, I am sure, to satisfy any man that is not very much preoccupied or otherwise engaged by particular ends. As for those reports concerning Kelly, some of which concern Dr. D. also, he tells us of, as I believe him that he hath heard so, so I must, and truly profess, that I have met with far contrary, and in my judgment, and by this account here given us by Dr. D., much more probable, and particularly that Kelly was put in prison by the emperor for a notable chemical cheat that he had put upon him. The particulars whereof, though they were fully related unto me, yet I will not. Nowadays, the more common cheat is to tell people that, um, well, there's going to be physical manifestation, and um, I have powers, and I can't show, if you don't believe strong enough, you'll never know these powers, and, um, and if you haven't gone through this work, according to, what, you know, so you're just not there, and um, and then you have pay membership dues and all sorts of other stuff. So, but, um, adventure upon, lest I mistake in some terms of art or petty circumstance of fact, and let the reader judge by that account, Dr. D, who best knew, doth give us here throughout the whole book of this Kelly, whether Weber's story in his Funeral Monument, page 45 and 46 of Downable Necromancy, another diabolical conjuration practiced by Kelly in Lancashire. Be not, besides, what there be said and attested much more probable than any thing that hath been or can be said by others, to his justification or commendation, which indeed doth make Dr. D's case altogether inexcusable, that believing and knowing the man to be such a one, he would have to do with him, and expected goods at his ministries, but that the doctor, his faith, and his intellectuals, through God's just judgment, as we have told, were so much in the power and government of his spirits, that they might persuade him to anything under the color of doing service unto God, yea, had it been to cut his own father's throat, as we see in the relation that they persuaded him to lie with another man's wife, and prostitute his own to a vile, and by himself believed, diabolical man. Besides, I have been told by many that Dr. D., very poor and every way miserable, died at Mortlach, here about London, which doth not seem to agree with the report in these annotations, but enough of that, uh, enough of them, Neither indeed have I said anything at all of other purpose to oppose the author, but to give this further satisfaction to the reader, or rather to the truth which I thought to do. The passage in which Weaver's Funeral Monuments, page 45 and 46, concerning Kelly, for their satisfaction, that have not in this book, is this. Kelly, otherwise called Talbot, that famous English alchemist of our times, who, flying out of his own country, after he had lost both his ears at Lancaster, was entertained by Rudolf the Second, and last of that Christian name, Emperor of Germany, for whom 
Elizabeth, a famous memory, sent very secretly. Captain Peter Gwynn, with some others to persuade him to return back to his own native home, which he was willing to do, and think to escape away in the night by stealth as he was clambering over a wall in his own house in Prague, which bears the name to this day and sometimes was an old sanctuary, and he fell down from the battlements, broke his legs, and bruised his body, which hurts within a while after he departed this world. Um, one of the things that we may be reminded with that there is the NSDAP, you know, the National Socialist German Workers' Party, rose out of the German Christian movement, and their Third Reich, um, you know, you had Charlemagne and, you know, the, the German, uh, so they thought out of Germany was going to rise the Third Reich was was their goal there, so, yeah. Um, said Corsum Hack, you will say, then this diabolical questioning of the dead for the knowledge, for the knowledge of future accents was put into practice by said Kelly, who, upon a certain night in the park of Walton in Ladale in the country of Lancaster, was one Paul Waring, his fellow companion in such deeds of darkness, invocated one of the infernal regiment to know certain passages in life, as also might be known by devil's foresight of the mat of the manner and time of death of a noble young gentleman, as then in wardship, the black ceremonies of the night being ended. Kelly demanded one of the gentleman's servants what course was the last buried in the law churchyard, a church thereunto adjoining who told him of a poor man that was buried there, but the same day he and the said Waring entreated his foresaid servant to go with them to the grave of the man so lately interred, which they did, and with all that helped them to dig up the carcass of the poor caitiff, whom, by their incantations, and made him, or rather some evil spirit through his organs to speak, who delivered strange predictions concerning said gentleman. I was told thus much more by the serving man, a secondary actor in that dismal, abhorred business. And diverse gentlemen and others who are now living in Lancashire, to whom he hath related this story, and the gentleman himself, whose memory I am bound to honor, told me a little before his death of this conjuration by Kelly, as he had it by relation from a said servant and tenant, only some circumstances accepted, which he thought not fitting to come to his master's knowledge. And Dr. The last one said post at the end of it. Uh, one of the things, Dr. Uh, um, is so it seems that after uh, the, the gaps in the diary, maybe you know, D went got out of touch. With this, I'm I'm not sure that the uh, the wife swapping incident was um of you know just a way to trick D or something. Um, but I th I think what uh, it is sort of clear that perhaps Kelly got greedy and started doing tricks rather than this private um, magical services for the most part. Um, and yeah, um, and Dee's, at the very, if this started when he was with D, D would have separated from him from, for safety reasons at the very least, so.